Well, good Wednesday. We went a little long yesterday, didn't we? But I was excited talking about uh, the treasure house of images and uh, adventures of uh, uh, Captain or Major General uh, Fuller in the, the colorful history of, of uh, the evolution of, of Thelemic thought. And uh, so I hopefully I, I whetted your appetite about uh, uh, if you don't have it already downloading or uh, getting yourself a copy of the treasure house of images and uh, how to use it in a meditational and and uh, a series of perhaps magical exercises uh, to edify your own work, your own magical work. Now, there's a chapter, uh, just to review something, I just want to re uh, re repeat one thing that I said yesterday um, from David Cherubim. It's a wonderful introduction uh, to it. Uh, Treasure House of Images is a priceless work of precious prose. It contains 13 chapters, actually a little bit more, more actually, uh, of exquisite hymns to the 12 signs of the zodiac and the sun. And also there's a an, one even before that, before the 12 signs of the zodiac started, which I'm going to share with you this morning. Uh, and then there is uh, uh, a very, very uh, uh, elaborate uh, 169 or something. Uh, uh, I read a, a few of those yesterday. The, uh, the 100, yeah, 169 cries of adoration. And then there's uh, uh, one that's also called the chapter known as the unconsciousness of God that is hidden from man for a sign. Now that's how it ends. And uh, that chapter uh, is headed up with a like a a white crescent moon as its symbol, and the one I'm going to share with you today has a black crescent moon as its symbol, and it's called the chapter known as the perception of God that is revealed unto to man for a snare. Anyway, there's just. Priceless, priceless things here. Um, let's see. I was, <laughs> I started to read. Uh, Treasure House of Images is a priceless piece of work of precious prose. It contains 13 chapters of exquisite hymns to the 12 signs of the zodiac and the sun. Each chapter of hymns contains 13 sections. Each of these 13 sections has the same number of syllables. Furthermore, each section of one zodiac sign is modified uh, by another sign. So in other words, the, the, the chapter for Aries starts off with uh, the first verse is an Aries verse, and the second is a Taurus verse, and the third is a Gemini, etc. And the Taurus verse starts off with Taurus and then goes to Gemini. And, okay. Uh, and uh, then Aries drops to the bottom. So it's Aries of Aries or Taurus of Aries. Okay. So each, each, uh, each verse modifies the next. And I'll give you just a, a quick example of that. Uh, here in the Aries of Aries, uh, first verse, that would be Aries of Aries, let's see. It says, O thou snow-clad Vulcan of scarlet flame, thou flame-crested pillar of fury, yea, as I approach thee, thou departest from me like unto a wisp of smoke blown from the window of my house. But the Taurus one, Aries drops all the way to the 
to be the very last one or the almost the twelfth one. O oh my God, thou mighty one, thou creator of all things, I renounce unto thee the crimson lust of the chase, the blast of the war horns, and all the gleaming spears, all that Aries type stuff is is renounced there in the in the Taurus one. But in the Gemini one, Aries would be modified by by uh, uh, Gemini. O thou flame of the horned storm clouds air, that sundrest their desolation, that outroarest the winds. I swear to thee by the gleaming sandals of the stars to climb beyond the summits of the mountains and rend thy robe. See the mountains with the... Well, anyway. It's not only ingenious, it's inspired and then tooted through the horn of genius. Uh, the Treasure House of Images is absolutely wonderful. Now, something that... Uh, oh, and, and Crowley, of course, uh, in a Class A document says that uh, the student should recite this book and particularly that 169 uh, adorations of of his star. Now, his star, uh, it's an old term that one's own star. And it usually means in old, uh, uh, sort of an archaic uh, parlance of astrologers, your star is not so much a star, but a zodiac sign that was was uh, rising or on the ascendant when you were born. So my particular star would be Aries. Okay, so let the student recite this book, particularly the 169 adorations unto his star. You you travel astrally to the zodiac sign of Aries. Let him seek out diligently in this in the sky his star. So you'd get yourself a sky chart and see where Aries is. And then in your rising on the planes or astrally project, you project the 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 shell of your your uh, astral body to the to that area. Uh, and then rock to and fro. I read all of that to you yesterday. But briefly, here's one that I've more or less overlooked for years and years because uh, Crowley's Rites of Eleusis uh, utilize the, uh, the Zodiacs section of 963. So I'm very familiar with that because that's... Uh, uh, certain of those are chanted at the beginning of the Rites of Eleusis, which we did for many years. But we've never done this one. And this one it starts off by saying, Here beginneth the book of meditations on the twelvefold adoration and the unity of God. But it doesn't start off with one of the twelve. It starts off with one that looks like that. The chapter known as the perception of God that revealeth unto man, that is revealeth unto man for a snare. Almost as if existence itself is a stain on the on the perfection of the divine absolute nothing. It's very zenny. I adore thee by the twelve fold snare and by the unity thereof. And instead of the thirteen verses as we see it. Uh, 
in all the the the, the twelve sections that follow, it has ten sections preceded by three. And instead of the zodiac signs, he sets creation from even before the Big Bang with Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Or. And then he starts in one, two, three, four. Okay. So zero, zero, zero. That would be Ain up on top there. In the beginning, there was not, and not spake unto not, saying, Let us beget on the nakedness of our nothingness the limitless, eternal, identical, and united. And without will, intention, thought, word, desire, or deed, it was so. Zero, zero. This would be Ein Sof. Then, in the depth of nothingness, hovered the limitless, as a raven in the night, seeing not, hearing not, and understanding not, neither was it seen, nor heard, nor understood. For as yet countenance beheld not countenance. And number three, Ein Sof Or. And as the limitless <clears throat> stretched forth its wings, an unextended, unextendable light became. Colorless, formless, conditionless, effluent, naked, and essential as a crystalline dew of creative effulgence and fluttering as a dove betwixt day and night, it vibrated forth as a crown of glory. And the crown of glory there is Kether, the crown. And in this particular uh, image, we've got uh, astrological uh, speculations of, uh, of the outer planets assigned to the so we're not discussing that at the moment. So number one, and out of the blinding whiteness of the crown grew an eye like unto an egg of a hummingbird cherished on a platter of burnished silver. Now number two. Thus I beheld thee, O my God, the lid of whose eye is as the night of chaos, and the pupil thereof as the marshaled order of the spheres. Just to recall that Hokmah on the Tree of Life, number two, is associated with the, the transcendent meaning of chaos which is also associated with the transcendent meaning of the beast and would also be associated with the transcendent meaning of Shiva. Number three. But I am but as a blind man who wanders through the noontide perceiveth not the lovely loveliness of day. And even as he whose eyes are unenlightened beholdeth not the greatness of this world in the depth of the starless night, so am I, I who am not able to search the unfathomable depth of thy wisdom. Now, all of this may seem like, oh, this is creation. This, 
Well, it is. But it's the descent. It's the descent of divine consciousness eventually into matter itself. So from Ain's point of view, this is a progressive descent of consciousness. But I digress. Number four. Now, look, the number four is beneath the abyss. Okay. There's that abyss. That Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof or are, are are reflected in a in a in an almost conceptual way with the supernal triad, Kether Hokma and Bina, one, two, and three. But that's all still conceptual. It's all still in potentiality. It hasn't broken into a dimension of matter and manifestation. This is all of this is sort of like the ideal. The ideal has not yet turned into the actual. The actualness of existence starts with number four and is represented by the rest of the tree. So number four, uh, which is associated with, with uh, Jupiter, Zeus, Jehovah, if you will, is the God that thinks it's God. It's the God that we can wrap our meat brain around and say, well, he's king of the gods. Or the Demiurgos, Demiurge. It's the God that thinks it's God, but really isn't God, but is totally unaware of the three concepts that went into making it, and totally clueless as to the three concepts that the supernal triad even came out of. But he's the guy that organizes stuff in, in number four, and this is what number four says. For what am I that I durst look upon thy countenance, pure blind one of small understanding that I am, blindly groping through the night of mine ignorance, like unto a little maggot, hid in the dark depths of a corrupted corpse. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, Fuller. Okay. <clears throat> Number five. Therefore, O oh my God, fashion me into a five-pointed star of ruby burning beneath the foundations of thy unity, that I may mount the pillar of thy glory and be lost in adoration of the triple unity of thy Godhead. I beseech thee, O thou who art to me as the finger of light, thrust through the black clouds of chaos, I beseech thee, O oh my God, hearken thou unto my cry. Well, number six, which is the, the direct reflection of number one. Then, O oh my God, am I not risen as the sun that eateth up ocean, as a golden lion that feedeth on a blue-gray wolf? so shall I become one with thy beauty, worn upon thy breast as the center of a six-fold star of ruby and sapphire. Seven. Yea, O God, gird thou me upon thy thigh, as a warrior girdeth his sword, smite my acuteness into the earth, and as a sower, Castest his seed into the furrows of the plow, so thou beget me upon these adorations of thy unity, O my conqueror. Number eight. And you can sort of see the military uh, uh, aspect of... Uh, his his devotional uh, devotional love. That's how a soldier woos 
the goddess of his love. Number eight. And thou shalt carry me upon thine hip, O thou flashing God, as a black mother of the south country carrieth her babe. Whence I shall reach my lips up to thy pap, and sucking out thy stars, shed them in these adorations of the earth. God, don't you wish you could write like that? Don't you wish you could think like that? Number nine. Moreover, O God, my God, thou who hast cloven, cloven me with thine uh, amethystine phallus, yikes, with thy phallus adamantine, with thy phallus of God and of gold and ivory, thus I am cleft in twain as two halves of a child that is split asunder by the sword of the eunuchs, and mine adorations are divided. One contendeth against his brother. Unite thou me, even as the split tree that closeth itself up upon the axe, that my song of praise unto thee may be one song. And finally, Malkuth the earth. For I am thy chosen virgin, O my God. Exalt thou me unto the throne of thy mother, unto the garden of supernal dew, unto the unutterable sea. And it's kind of interesting that... Uh, even the title page of uh, Treasure House of Images uh, has a little Latin sort of subtitle, uh, uh, Corona Corolla, well, no, Crown Corolla, thus Malkuth is called when he ascends to Kether. Malkuth is in Kether as Kether is in Malkuth. And this uh, opening chapter of the Treasure House of Images ends up Amen and Amen of Amen and Amen of Amen of Amen and Amen of Amen of Amen of Amen That's a lot of Amen's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them for the 10 verses. It is a treasure house, and the more you dig, the more you get it, get out of it. It's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And the more we find out about the early years of, of uh, uh, Crowley's life, and we're finding out more historically about uh, uh, the sequence of events and the characters that uh, Crowley's uh, 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 coming in contact with, and how Crowley is developing as a as a magician, how Crowley is developing into a magus eventually. Uh, but uh, but anyway, so that's that's two days on Treasure House of Images. Tomorrow we should start something else. Because believe it or not, I've got a, I've got to do another uh, uh, Zoom thing for our friends in Australia and around the world and things like that. So that's why I'm dressed in my magical authoritative turtleneck. <laughs> Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Amen, and amen, and amen of amen of amen.